Hello everyone, Earl Henderson, Primordial Defense. Thank you for watching. I have another Monday quarterback video for you. I'm going to play this video and talk about things that are going on, to better explain what's going on, and talk about things that I think that are being done right and or done wrong. Here we go. This following which we're reading right, we'll photo through the beginning of what a compartment is investigated, even as with the lock by footage of this and acted known images and information to affect an arrest. Viewer discretion is advised. On Thursday, March 3rd, 2022, at approximately 1210 a.m., Lakewood Sheriff Station deputies responded to the intersection of Downey Avenue and Artesia Boulevard in the city of Bellflower regarding a call where 30 to 40 vehicles were blocking the intersection and were doing burnouts, preventing use by other vehicles. While attempting to restore order and dealing with a traffic collision that occurred during the intersection takeover, deputies were flagged down by a victim. The victim indicated he was standing at the gas station located on the northeast corner of the intersection and had just been stabbed by a male Hispanic armed with a large garden tool. The victim lifted up his shirt and showed deputies puncture wounds to his back that he received during the assault. The victim immediately identified 32-year-old Edgar Ortiz, who was now walking southbound on Downey Avenue as the person who stabbed him. Ortiz walked into an apartment complex located in the 17,400 block of Downey Avenue. Deputies made their way into the courtyard area of the apartment complex and observed Ortiz standing in a hallway next to a family member while still holding the approximate three-foot-long garden claw, which had six approximate four-inch spikes on one end. Deputies attempted to detain Ortiz, but he took off running down the hallway towards the rear parking lot area of the apartment complex. All right, so we'll back this up. Person with 30 puncture wounds, Nick, armed with a large garden tool. The victim lifted up his shirt and showed deputies puncture wounds to his back that he received during the assault. The victim immediately identified... So this illustrates avoiding stupid places with stupid people doing stupid shit. Uh, obviously, this is not a good part of the neighborhood to be in. Um, so if you can avoid bad places, then avoid those bad places. Now, I don't know the circumstances with this dude and a skateboard and why he's there. He could live in the neighborhood for all I know, but it still doesn't, um, change the fact that you should avoid stupid places and stupid people doing stupid shit. By 32 year old Edgar Ortiz, who was now area of the apartment complex and observed Ortiz standing in a hallway next to a family member while still holding the approximate three foot long garden claw which had six approximate four inch spikes on one end. Deputies attempted to detain Ortiz but he took off running down the hallway towards the rear parking lot area of the apartment complex. The garden tool. See the guy Turn around. Let me see. This dude did it? Yeah! Hey, yeah. hey, uh... Yeah, he's got injuries. Where's he at? Yay! Hey! He's going in here. Hey, who's this radio car can pull out? Hey, right hey hold on, hold on. Wait right here, dude. Hey, do you know him? Alright, go! Hey, tell him to come back out real quick, so we can talk to him. Tell him to come outside. Get out of the way, dude. Get out of the way, dude. Get out of the way. Get out of the way. Stop. Hey, come here. Come here. What? Miss your hands, dude. Hey, watch out, dude. Hey, tell him to come back out real quick so we can talk to him. This dude is purposely being a fucking dick trying to slow this officer down. Tell him to come outside. Get out of the way, dude. Get out of the way, dude. Get out of the way. Hey, come here. Come here. What? Hey, come here. 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 Come here.
Watch out, dude. Hey, let's shut it up. All right, so he, the suspect runs out this back right here, and this officer holds up. He does not um, actively pursue around that corner because he doesn't know if this dude has set up an ambush and is waiting for him to come around that corner and then claw him with that big ass thing, whatever. So he's doing the right thing. As soon as someone leaves your line of sight, and there's a time frame in which you're going to be able to get into a position to see them again. You don't know how things have changed. You don't know if they've stopped, doubled back, and have taken a different position, waiting to ambush you when you come out, whatever. So he's done the right thing. This dude has left his sight. It's not safe for him to go through this bottleneck right here and then potentially walk right into an ambush. Ortiz ran through the rear parking lot and then down a vehicle driveway, which led back onto Downey Avenue. Deputies at the front of the apartment complex observed Ortiz in the middle of the street running northbound. Ortiz abruptly changed direction and began to run eastbound in the middle of the street, directly towards a deputy. While running towards a deputy, he raised a guarding claw above his head with a spiked end pointed towards a deputy, at which time a deputy-involved shooting occurred. All right, pay attention to the left screen, left screen. Ortiz was struck by gun. Ortiz was struck by gunfire and dropped the garden claw next to him. Los Angeles County Fire Department paramedics who were staged nearby due to a traffic collision at the intersection from the original call for service arrived within moments. Ortiz was treated by paramedics and ultimately transported by ambulance to a local hospital where he was pronounced dead. The approximate three foot long garden claw which had six metal spikes on one end was recovered at the scene. Ortiz had previous convictions for assault with a deadly weapon on a peace officer and driving under the influence. In addition, Ortiz was on active parole for assault with a deadly weapon on a peace officer <laughs> a at the time of the course. incident. The Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department has begun a driving under Ortiz had previous convictions for assault with a deadly weapon on a peace officer and driving under the influence. In addition, Ortiz was on active parole for assault with a deadly weapon on a peace officer. On parole. Oh my god. Same shit over and over and over. Like, if this motherfucker was in prison, guess what? This would not have happened. Why? Why, why, why do we continue to let cr violent criminal offenders out early? We have to change shit. We have to have justice reform. We have to start locking up violent criminals for long periods of time no more fucking parole for these motherfuckers no more probation no more plea deals no more you only serve x amount percent of your sentence and then you're eligible for something no more good credit uh good behavior for credit time served none of that like take that shit away you do violence against another person there should be mandatory minimum sentencing. You assault someone like that, 
you rob someone, whatever. If it says 10 years, then it needs to be 10 years and not a day less. Not a fucking day less. And in fact, it should be worded and done in a way that if you because if you become a problem while you're locked up, then time can be added to your sentence. You want to join a gang while you're in prison and cause a bunch of fucking problems? Then guess what? You can turn that 10-year sentence into a fucking 20-year sentence for all I care. People like this do not need to be out on the streets with us. When it comes to vicious dogs, we understand that a vicious dog cannot be fixed. A vicious dog is going to be vicious its whole entire fucking life. Whatever happened to that dog to make it become vicious, it's in it. Like, you can't fucking change it. And no matter what state you go to, there's going to be one or two options. Either the dog is going to have to be confined for the rest of its life. It'll always have to stay in a kennel. It can never freely roam its own yard or anything like that or be on a chain. It has to be like in an actual enclosure or it gets euthanized. We understand that. When it comes to humans, it's like we, we lose that, that basic understanding. We seem to think that, oh, well, if we take this vicious human and we put them in time out for maybe a couple years for hurting this person and we let them take a GED class and we let them take a substance abuse program class and do a yoga class and instead of them actually serving two years they complete those classes they can get out in one year well then this person can can, can rejoin society and be a contributing member yeah no that shit don't fucking happen these motherfuckers don't learn they don't change they come out some of them come out worse than what they were before they went in. Violent offenders do not need to be released early. Violent offenders need to be kept locked up and away from the rest of us. People like this don't play well with others. They are no different than a vicious dog and they should be treated like that. Out on fucking parole. <laughs> God. And some of these little fuck sticks over here, like that dude in the red, his ass needs to be locked up. Fucking interfering with a official government business. Harboring a fucking fugitive. Whatever charge you could come up with it needs to be done so those two shots that came <laughs> so he jumps them he goes down on the ground and he fires two more He might end up running into a problem justifying why he fired those last two rounds. I don't know. Um, but him shooting initially, there's no problem with that. I mean, this guy has a deadly physical weapon. Um, <coughs> although this thing is just a gardening tool, <clears throat> it can kill a person. One of those spikes going through your eye will kill you. This going into your neck hitting your carotid artery, it will kill you. Me, personally, I don't have a problem with those last two shots. Anything worth shooting once is worth shooting twice. Um, you know, you, you give him a full course meal, everybody gets seconds. You know what? He can get seconds as well. So, um, he brought this shit upon himself. He wanted to run towards this officer with his deadly physical weapon. Um, like he's going to hurt him. 
he got what came to him. Now, like I said, this officer might run into an issue uh, with those last two shots. Um, it may be difficult to a certain audience for him to justify why he fired those last two rounds. And he could run into some problems for that. But for me personally, I, I, don't, I don't have any problems with it. But there, where he's at in Los Angeles, the people he has to answer to, they may have a problem with it. The first the first few rounds fired as the guy's coming to him, no problem there whatsoever at all. But once he's on the ground, then some people would be hard to justify those last two rounds. Next to him, back paramedic, the approximate three foot long. Yeah, one of these going through your eye or into your throat. Yeah, that, that's that's going to. If that doesn't kill you, that will very seriously physically injure you. Like you're not gonna, <laughs> you're not just gonna go back to work the next day after having this impaled through your fucking throat or your face. Not much else to say about this video. If you like what you hear and see, go ahead and give me a like and a share. If you have not already, hit the subscribe button and stay tuned for more Monday quarterback videos. Earl Henderson, Primordial Defense, thank you for watching.